Hi everybody, Dan Oman, Nicole Russo. The DRF race of the day for Thursday, July the 13th is also our first Spa Babies race for 2023. It's opening day at Saratoga, a little slice of heaven on earth. And let's take a look at the field for the grade three Schuylerville race number nine at the spa. We're going three quarters of a mile. This race is for two-year-old fillies. And Nicole, I think this is one of the more competitive editions of the Schuylerville we've seen in recent years. Absolutely. I mean, beyond just being a big field, you have fillies who have run at a number of different tracks. You have fillies who have, uh, you know, won from on the lead. You have fillies who have won from off of it. We've got a lot of really nice pedigrees in here, both established sires and some of this year's freshman sires who were evaluating. I think just the mix of connections and pedigrees and experience levels of these fillies makes it a really interesting race to take apart. And there's a lot of different ways you could go in this big Field. Friends, please click or scan the QR code for Race of the Day access on your mobile devices, which includes free Formulator Pass performances. And what's great about Formulator Pass performances is you get extensive trainer and pedigree stats, very important for these two-year-old races. And if you're unfamiliar with the Spa Babies franchise, every summer, Nicole and I take a look at a two-year-old race at Saratoga each day, and we really try to provide a deep dive and give you as much information as possible for you to make the most informed wagers. Let's take a look at the Timeform US pace projector for the Schuylerville. We're expecting a fast pace. Many of these fillies like to run on the front. Carmelina has to break from that sometimes intimidating inside post, but if she does, she should show speed along with the three union suit and the nine dancing Diana. Yeah, a lot of this really hinges on whether you think Carmelina will get away well from that inside post. As you said, it can be intimidating, especially for inexperienced horses in a big field like this. I like that she's got Jose Ortiz up, just came away with the title at a competitive Belmont meet and always a, a factor in the Saratoga rider standings. If she gets away well, I think she's a big threat. And you'll note the LP flag over the chiclet of the number four status seeker. That indicates that status seeker has the fastest late time form U.S. pace rating. Perhaps important if this fast pace plays out and the leaders come back to the closers. Let's start things off by watching Carmelina's successful career debut at Parks. This is a four and a half furlong maiden special weight. She showed good speed from the start and she was very impressive. She's one of two in here for trainer Butch Reed. Tell me about her sire, Maximus Miss. Mischief. Well, Maximus Mischief, uh, one of this year's freshmen, a graded winning two-year-old himself, buy into Mischief, of course, the nation's four-time reigning leading sire and emerging as a sire of sires. So a lot expected from Maximus Mischief and some of his other sons that we're going to see coming down the pike. Uh, Maximus Mischief, he was one, you know, kind of had the tools to uh, coming in to, to be a very good two-year-old sire, and he's starting to come alive. He's leading his class with five first crop winners, including this filly, who earned a 70 buyer in that debut. That's the second highest number in this field. And she was rather visually impressive as well, this $44,000 weanling. She's a Pennsylvania bred. A lot of stamina in this pedigree. Stretching out to three quarters shouldn't be an issue. She's got a break. She was off maybe a beat slow in the debut, but then she rushed up. She's very, very fast. And if she breaks, she's going to show some speed. Now, the number two, Becky's Joker, is a first-time starter, not only facing winners, but facing some very talented two-year-old fillies. A $130,000 weanling, Becky's Joker was bought back for $50,000 as a year this is a very fast and precocious family. Yeah, and you've got another son of Into Mischief on top in Practical Joke, who was a grade one winning two-year-old himself. He is a very good young sire. I think he's overshadowed a little bit because he had Gunrunner and Arrogate in the same class of stallions coming to stud that year uh, and of course they've just been breakout successes but practical joke has been in behind them statistically at every mark of their careers and he's a very good sire especially with his young runners and his debut runners uh, a debut starter in a stakes field and from the contessa barn which usually you know they take a race or two to heat up but it's very interesting that Javier Castellano, riding as well as he ever has, has the mountain in this filly, and she's coming in off a bullet work. 
And not only that, bullet workout, three furlongs and an extremely sharp 34 and change over the Saratoga main track, but I think she's pretty mature. She's already up to six furlongs in some of her breezes. The number three is Union Suit, and this filly's pretty fast. She won her career debut at Horseshoe Indianapolis, and after that race, Eclipse Thoroughbreds, Matacat Stables bought into her. She ran very well in her first start with those connections, finishing second in the Astoria behind Closing Act. Now, she's fast, this $9,000 short yearling. She's going to have to avoid a speed duel yes and i think it'll be interesting to see what she does in her second start as you mentioned for these new connections she had that nice debut at indiana then faced tougher competition we'll see what she learned from that experience and what trainer graham motion and jockey manny franco learned about her from that experience the four is status sneaker, and we're going to watch her career debut for trainer Rudy Rodriguez at Belmont. And what I liked about this performance, Nicole, is that status seeker seemed very professional in here. Not only did she come from off of the pace to run down this leader, but she was in between horses and split them on the turns. And once she changes leads, she shows dogged determination to win. Yeah, as you said, I think professional is a very good word for her. And that's key for these young horses stepping up to stakes company at this early point of their careers. Uh, and as you mentioned, you know, she's one who could really benefit from a hot pace if it develops in front of her. Nothing at all wrong with her on paper. She's going to have to take a step forward from a buyer perspective. But I don't think that's a reason to rule her out because, as we'll discuss, a lot of them in this field are kind of in the same boat. This is a filly by Upstart from an active female family. A half-sibling uh, closed the game, recently earned stakes placing at Presque Isle Downs over their Tapita surface. The five is Saratoga Secret, a debut winner for the great Mr. Lucas in uh, pace-pressing fashion at Ellis Park, a very respectable 64 buyer speed figure. This is a $200,000 yearling by Arrogate. The dam is a half to blended citizen, who I believe on the Jeff Ruby on synthetic, the Peter Pan on dirt, looking at Lee as another half sibling to the dam. She, he was second in the Kentucky Derby. So there's a lot of pedigree here. And this one was visually impressive in her debut. Yeah, and as you said, you know, a lot of class in that family. It's kind of a two-turn family, but the late Arrogate, who is just on fire, did very well with his two-year-olds last year. He can get precocity as well. Uh, I liked her maiden, very professional, and there were some well-bred horses in there. And I'll wind up saying this a couple times during this meet, I think. Ellis has quietly had a very good two-year-old program in recent years. I think the secret is out now with these big purses in Kentucky enticing horsemen to keep a strong division there in the summer. And this spring, the last couple of weeks of the Churchill Downs condition book were run at Ellis, leading to some more good two-year-old races there, uh, Saratoga Secrets race being one of those. I think the Ellis to Saratoga angle could be a particularly good one this week. Up next is the number six closing act, the only two-time winner in the field, the only prior stakes winner in the field. Here's her win in the Astoria at Belmont's second time out, and she just shows she's a very mature two-year-old. She's very, very forward. She sat off of the leaders. She blew right by. She wins easily as a three-to-five shot should. The buyer speed figure came back a bit light, a 53, but that professionalism, this running style, it's going to help her, I think, in the Schuylerville, and she could certainly take a step forward on the buyer scale for the great Steve Asmussen. Absolutely. And Steve's two-year-olds tend to improve with experience. As you said, she's another one who's going to have to take a step forward on the speed figures, but she improved from her first start to her second, and she's had enough time since that good Astoria win that I'm not fearing a bounce. I think she can take another step forward. Her sire Munnings really just does it all. He's really emerged as an elite sire in recent years, a speedy female family from, from a top Texas program. And I kind of can't believe that she's 10 to 1 on the morning line. You know we're at Saratoga because we moved from Lucas to Asmussen to Todd Pletcher. The seven is wine on tap. This is a beautifully bred daughter of Tappet, a $600,000 yearling, winning her career debut for Todd. A nice style. I think she gained a lot out of this effort, Nicole. She broke pretty well. She sat just off of the leader, and she really has to work to put away this long shot. 76 buyer speed figures, strongest in the field. Nice outside post with tactical speed. Lots to like, perhaps, except the price at post time. 
Yeah, and you know, we talk all the time about intent. This is a well-meant, well-regarded filly. I feel that they'll have her primed for a good race here, and then we'll want to put her away till the grade one spin away at the end of the meet. As you said, the top buyer in the field with a 76, knocking on the door of that benchmark 80 for the two-year-old class. And being by Tappet, you know, you certainly don't think that, you know, going six furlongs, going a little bit longer is going to be a problem for her at all. The number eight is Kiss for Luck, and she has a lovely pedigree, and she also looked pretty good in her debut for Butch Reed at Parks, going four and a half furlongs. She showed good speed in this race. The fractions were not very fast. She went 48 and two for the half. You see she's on her left lead at this point, but she's going to keep on going to win. Only a 36 buyer, but when you look at this pedigree, Nicole, I have a feeling there's more under the tank. Yeah, especially, you know, VQuest, a very similar uh, pattern in her two-year-old campaign. And, of course, she came on toward the end of the season uh, to be a multiple grade one winner and to claim the two-year-old championship. She, of course, improved going from sprint distances to longer distances and routes. You would certainly expect the same from her sire being by Accelerate. I think they need a little bit of time. I think, uh, you know, that's why you saw maybe a little bit of unprofessionalism in her debut, as you mentioned, with the lead change. Changes, but a lot of two-year-old ability in the female family to balance everything out. She'll need to take a step forward from a buyer perspective. But as you said, I think just looking at, you know, the, her pedigree and how these horses have developed, that there's more there. I was down at Delaware Park last week for the Dell Cap, and there's some buzz around the number nine, Dancing Diana, an impressive debut winner last month. Here she is, uh, and she had to deal with a, a pretty fast horse in the early stages of this race. And you're going to see that one tire to finish third, while Dancing Diana just keeps right on rolling. 66 buyer for trainer Chuck Lawrence. She's by a very promising young stallion in Bolt Dioro. Yeah, Boltoro was last year's leading freshman sire in a very competitive class. Uh, he sired Precocity. He came out early in the season, and they really just kept on going. And I know his uh, next crops hit, you know, were expected to run well as well, looking at kind of his sales results from the yearlings, from the two-year-olds. Uh, you know, so really Precocity from the stallion is what we're coming to expect. And then they continued on throughout the season as the distances got longer. And then number 10, Mila Junes, is going to be a big price, but that certainly didn't bother her in this race. Her career debut at Monmouth over a wet fast track, she was 54 to 1 in her career debut. She didn't run like a 54 to 1 shot. She inhales the leaders late. She just looks like a big, strong filly. Yeah, and you know, I do kind of have to question how much possibly that wet fast track moved her up. That said, she's by Tapacher, who's another very underrated young stallion. His offspring run on everything. They're professionals. They're just racehorses. And you would have to think that she's going to get a nice hot pace in front of her to perhaps set up a nice run again. Completing the field is the number 11, Sugar Treat, who made her career debut in this race at Gulfstream Park. Now, consider that this race is on the all-weather surface, the tapita there. Sugar Treat broke well from the inside post, sort of shuffled back down on the rail on the turn, but gets to the outside, and she grinds down the 6-5 to five leader, a horse that would come back to win her very next start. Yeah, beating that next out winner on debut is certainly a good sign. Uh, she won on synthetic, but lots of dirt speed in the female family. And, of course, her sire enticed a dirt performer. She's one of two winners so far from the first crop of enticed, uh, who was a good juvenile himself, a well-bred son of Medaglia Doro. Medaglia Doro, the sire of Bolt Doro, last year's leading freshman sire. So certainly we're expecting to see a little bit of precocity from this filly who's getting Flavian Pratt aboard for her next start. Now, before we get to our top selections, please click the subscribe button on the Daily Racing Form YouTube channel for the latest DRF videos. Top pick time for the Schuylerville opening day at Saratoga. Nicole, you're going with Saratoga Secret. You mentioned that Ellis Park program. I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah, and I mean, beyond that, I really liked the way she won her debut. I thought, you know, her pace pressing effort was very professional. I'd like to see her sit a little bit more off what's expected to be a hotter pace uh, this week. But I think Louis Saez, who, you know, is coming off a great meet in Kentucky and will look to contend for the Saratoga Rider title, could have her sitting, you know, a little bit further off the pace 
for Wayne Lucas, who is just loaded with two-year-olds last year, really shocked the 2022 yearling sales. Uh, and, you know, being by Arrogate and from this terrific family that's produced some classic placed horses, I don't think the extra distance will be any sort of hindrance for her at all. I'm going to go with the 11 Sugar Treat. I know she won her debut on Synthetic, but she's a half to a couple of graded stakes placed two-year-olds on dirt. Her sire enticed was all dirt. And I have a feeling that if Mark Cassie thought she was merely a synthetic filly, she'd run her in the My Dear. He'd run her in the My Dear stakes at Woodbine this weekend, which is a five and a half furlong race for two-year-old fillies on the synth. Nicole's going 5, 7, 6, 11. I'm going 11, 7, 1, 9. It's the DRF race of the day. It's Spa Babies. It's Saratoga. Good luck and enjoy.